Welcome to another episode of Electricians in Small Cupboards. As you know, we feel most comfortable cramped in a tiny little cupboard because in the UK, we love to make our life more difficult by installing consumer units in stupid locations. This is the kind of hodgepodge that we've got going on at the moment. Now, to give you a bit of background on this job, the customer initially contacted us because they wanted an electric vehicle charging point installed. So that is the reason why we're doing this EICR first because the existing consumer unit is too old to fit a new circuit to. This consumer unit just looks like a bit of a bodge so we don't really want to touch that. So I said to the customer we'll do an EICR first, we'll put a new consumer unit in because it's kind of time for an upgrade really anyway and then we'll install the EV charging point. Today's video is actually sponsored by Mega. They are the ones who provide us with awesome test equipment. They also provide us with our awesome certification platform cert suite. And um, we're gonna just do a deep dive for you today about how we use it, all the great features. If you want to know more, there's a link in the description where you can find out more about Mega Cert Suite and you can get a free trial so you can try it out for yourself, no obligation. And it's really worth having a look at if you've not got certification software yourself or if you're not really happy with the one that you use at the moment. So thanks to Mega for sponsoring this video. So I've got my phone in my pocket, I'm tethering to my phone with my iPad and this is the certification software that we use it's called Mega Cert Suite. Now you might have seen me doing a previous video where I kind of did a deep dive on our certification software at the time that was called Vespula and it's still the same software but actually what's happened since that video is Vespula got bought by Mega They've rebranded it as Cert Suite, but it's essentially the same platform and we absolutely love it because it makes our life easier. So I will show you a little bit how it works and some of the time saving features as we go through. And I'll just put in the readings. One of the things I love about it is that you can put pictures in of the non-compliances that you find and that is a game changer for us because it enables us to sell a higher quality EICR to our customers because we can say look anything we find that's dodgy we'll give you pictures and an explanation of what the problem is and so they get this beautiful like 14 page PDF report in full color with pictures and it is way better than just like a scrappy four page EICR that's been filled in by hand or whatever. It's a totally different ball game. So that's one of the reasons that we love Cert Suite and we use it all the time. And today I'm using my new mega tester as well, 1741 plus. First time using this doing an EICR, so I'm uh, happy to put it through its paces. So let's get stuck in. So first thing I'll do is just fill out the basic information. So purpose of the inspection is um, to ascertain the current condition of the electrical installation. Now, this is a time saving feature because you've just got drop down boxes with pre-selected options. And that means we can just go through and, and get it filled out quite quickly. We're doing a visual inspection, full verification, date of the work, which is today's date. Date reviewed and issued is when I'm in the office and I kind of do the final sign off. So if it was Lee doing this, I'm the QS, I'd be going through and checking this maybe tomorrow or the day after and then sending it on to the customer. Next inspection due, we'll leave that blank for the moment until we know whether it's a pass or fail, but to be honest, I know that it's gonna be a fail. So I'm just gonna put following remedial actions. Records available, there aren't any. Um, so that's that first section. Installation details, we'll leave this blank because we don't wanna share any customer details, but it is what it is, super self-explanatory. Inspector is me, authorizer is me. Limitations, just your usual thing, I don't need to talk to you about that. Condition of the installation is where we do our little summary and our you know, overall assessment. Supply and earthing, that's where we're gonna start now. So it's a TNS system, so we click the TNS box. That is because the earth comes off the sheath of the supplier's cable and Lee has nicely labelled these up. So that's fine, that is 16 mil. It's an AC system, one phase, two wire, nominal voltage, 230 volts, frequency 50 hertz. It automatically fills this out for us. And here we've got our first test reading to input, which is our external earth fault loop impedance. So we'll do that now. 
So first test we're going to do is our ZE and to do that what we've got to do is disconnect our main earthing conductor and we've got to basically turn all the power off first. So power's going off Lee, okay? So now that our power's turned off we're going to disconnect our main earthing conductor from here. And the reason for that is that we don't want any parallel paths. We're only measuring the main earth coming in. We're not getting any parallel paths through any bonding connections, which might be going into the ground through the pipes. So we're going to turn our um, tester on to the ZS setting. And we've got a three lead option, um, but we, we can actually do the two lead high current test for this and we'll clip one crocodile clip on there and then the other one on the incoming live conductor which, which I'll just do it on this board because it's easy. So we've got 0.22, absolutely fine. So we'll put that in our ZE, 0.22. Perspective fault current needs to be done with all the bonding conduct conductors in place so we'll connect that back now. So I've put it on the Z setting and then, then it gives you the Ka reading at the top. So we've got 1.11 Ka or in other words 1110 amps is the maximum prospective earth fault current. And what we'll do as well is we'll do the same but we'll do it uh, live to neutral. So the highest reading is the first one that we did, the prospective earth fault current which is 1.11. So put that in. Number of supplies is one. It would be more if you had like a generator or some other alternative source of supply. Uh, the phase sequence is NA. Supply polarity is correct. We verified that when we did our Z, uh, ZE test. Primary overcurrent device. Now that is this. There's no way of identifying it without breaking the seals. So we don't actually know what it is but these tails need upgrading by the DNO anyway. The main tails are actually okay. So what we'll do is recommend to the customer that they get the DNO out to upgrade these tails and to change the main fuse to 100 amp if possible. We'll put yes on continuity check for the moment, but we'll have to go through and actually do some tests on that. So we get our long wonder lead now and we'll do our bonding tests. We're gonna put it on the low resistance ohm setting. Um, and then what we have to do is null the leads out. So we test these together. There we go, it's on zero now, so that's fine. We're gonna clamp onto this with one end. And then we're gonna clamp the other end onto our bonding connection. And then we're gonna just check that we've got continuity, which we do. We've done our R2 readings, they're all good. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna go through and just add in the circuit schedule for everything and then we can start doing our R1 and R2 tests. So I'm going to put that the water bond is okay. There's no oil, no structural steel, no lightning protection or other incoming services. So now we can move on to our boards and this is where set suite really comes into its own when it comes to quickly filling out the board schedules. I'm just going to add a new board, DB1, so that'll be the main one. Number of phases one and it creates a new board and then what we're going to do is add our circuits individually and we just start at the beginning and work our way through so we will click add to create a new circuit circuit number one 32 amp and that is the let's see what it's labeled as here cooker now this is actually redundant one so we will just call it old cooker and then i'll put brackets Blank plate next to oven socket. And then we're not gonna test that because it's not actually in use. We'll add a second circuit, and that is a 16 amp circuit, which says water heater. So that's that spur upstairs. And for this, we've got a template. So we've got immersion heater, MCB, as a template that we've already set up. All the circuits that we use often, like an EV charger circuit, cooker circuit, ring circuit, lighting circuit, we've created a template and all we do is tap on it 
click done and it fills out all the basic stuff. So we've got that it's a 60898 MCB, which I think it is. Um, we've got the disconnection time. It's a, six, it's a B16, 6KA braking capacity. Max ZS is in there. Type of wiring is in there. Reference method. Everything's kind of in there already. So it just saves us a lot of time. So now all we've got to do is basically fill out the test results. So for example, R2, I did an R2 test. I had like 0 0.5. Um, so I'll put a comma instead of a, a point, but you get the idea. So now what we can do is start with our inspection schedule. Um, just go and check the various things on here. So again, it's just sort of a tick box exercise, but you go through it step by step and you just, it enables you to think about each item and make sure it's, if it's okay. So like the service cable is one, we've got to check that. That's fine. Meter tails. Um, now let me know in the comments, guys, if you do EICRs, do you code the fact that you've got 16 millimeter cable meter tails because I know in the ESQCR regulations, the electrical safety quality and continuity regulations, now it says that you should actually have 25 mil tails as standard for every installation. But um, some people choose to code that as a C3, other people don't. Let me know in the comments. So I'm just going to go through this. This is a bit boring. I'm not going to show you all of this, but it's just a tick box exercise going through. And if we find any issues like the Henley block, for example, that is a codable offense having it upside down because the top surface does not comply with IPXXB or IP4X. It should be the other way around. So the top surface is smooth with no holes, but they've just put it upside down. So we'll code that as a C2. When we select our observation, this is another great feature of Cert Suite is you can select from like a whole list of standard observations that have been put into the system. So if I click on that, I can see like consumer PVC tails more than three meters in length and not mechanically protected. Meter tails undersized according to the ESQCR regs, for example. Um, so we can just select one of those. Um, poor termination. Um, strands cut out, all the basic stuff that you might find on an EICR. Or if you find something else, you can just add it in here, you just type it in yourself. And then next to it, this is really cool, is you can click image, and then I can click choose file, take photo, and then literally take a picture of it like that. So. Boom, do that, use photo, and then we add that to our report, and we can even add a brief description of the photo. And that just adds it to our schedule of inspections. So one of the things I'm observing on this report is really difficult to access certain items of electrical equipment. For example, down here, if I show you, this is the um, switch for the hob, and it's right in the back corner of the cupboard. So I'm just going to take a picture of that and then add that in to the report. And I've just put it under the regulation about access, uh, suitability of access of equipment. And then you can add more than one photo. So now I can, I can add another one. Um, here we go. If I click add, I can add another observation. Same kind of thing again for the same regulation, but a different thing, which is the oven socket, which is like right under here. Um, it's an absolute nightmare to get to. I'll put a picture of that as well. <laughs> now, fortunately, I think that they're actually getting a new kitchen fitted soon. So it's not like the end of the world, this. They'll get that fixed when they fit the new kitchen. So I've got a list of observations now here already just from the visual inspections that I've done based on the inspection schedule. And you can see the codes come out in different colors. So yellow is C3, orange is C2 or amber, and then red is C1 or further investigation. And it puts the regulation number next to them on the inspection schedule as well, which is really nice. And you can just tap on the photo and then it shows you the photo 
that you've attached there. So I'll show you what the full report looks like later. It looks really amazing when it's done as a PDF. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the boards and I'm going to do the RCD test readings on these two RCDs. So to do that, we click on RCDs and we just need our no trip uh, one times and five times test on the main RCD first. So that is our auto RCD test done, super quick and easy, and then we can flick through the readings. So we've got 23 milliseconds, 32, so that's the one that we'll record, and then at five times we've got 4.7 and 13. So we've got 32 and 13 to record. Yeah, the RCD testing on this Mega is so quick. It's the quickest I've ever experienced from any MFT. So we've got 25.8, 35, so we'll record 35, that's the highest. And then we've got 7.8 and 15.1, so 35 for one times and 15.1 for five times. I'm adding an observation about this, and I mean, look at that, just like all over the place. It's the old immersion heater point, so I'm just putting loose immersion heater point. So I've added the information, and now I'm just going to add a photo. It's just great being able to do it with your camera. Boom. Done. I promised I'd show you guys how I do the certification for the EV chargers. One of the great things about CertSuite is that they have their own EV charger only certificate format that you can use, which makes a beautiful document that you can send to your customers with all the details of their EV charger, including the test results. So I'll show you what the final PDF looks like, but now I'll show you the test procedure that we do and how we put the readings in. I've got the charger cover off here. I've got my um, R1 and R2 link so that R1 and R2 are linked out of the board. So I'm going to do the continuity test here. I've got 0.11 for my R1 and R2 reading. So that's great. So in Cert Suite, what I do is I'll go to the board section and I click add board. And then instead of selecting a distribution board, I select an EV charging point. So uh, we do that. Number of phases, one click done then on the board I click that and then I can put in all the details of my uh, location supply charge point model so we can go through and we've got like Tesla wall connector we can put the serial number in there uh, voltage the earth loop impedance test reading the PFC test reading that we do at the DB um, all the various readings as if it's like at the, D at the DB but also then the EV charging point circuit. So this is where we'll input our R1 and R2 of 0.11. But it's also got the various functional tests for the charger that we're going to run through with our EVSE test unit. So that's really important too. So we've got, it's a, a mode three, it's got 7.4 kilowatts, interlock, um, doesn't have an interlock because it's not a untethered PE test. We'll, we'll do all of that in a minute, the CP, PP, all that stuff. Insulation resistance, we've already done. That's fine, that's uh, off the scale. Earth loop impedance, we'll do in a minute once we liven it up. And then we've got our RCD test reading. So it's got an RCBO, type A, um, 40 amp, 30 milliamp. And we'll do our trip times for the RCD there as well. Pass for the the thing we can even do our ramp test our dc monitor test everything that you need for an ev testing wise is in here and it creates a beautiful one page certificate with all the readings on which looks really nice so i'll jump back at the board um liven that up we'll do our zs here then we'll put the cover on we'll do our functional tests So we're going to now input our Z, E and um, PFC readings. So we've got 0.11, pop that in, PFC was 2.13. So that's all good. So now we can liven it up and then we'll do our um, ZS and our RCD tests and our functional tests. So what we're going to do now is do our functional 
and our ZS and we got this amazing mega EVSE adapter that goes with the mega 14, 70, 17, 41 plus MFT. And I've never, used, I've not used this yet before to test EV charging points. So it's going to be interesting to see if it does what it's supposed to do, which is to not trip the internal RCDs and stuff. And you actually can get the charger to turn on. So to do that, put it on C. There we go. Tesla charger is all livened up now. And it's simulating a charge. We've got our mega device doing that. So I've got to run through the various um, statuses. Um, and to do that, we use the CP state button. We set our PP state to 32 amps, which is the load that we're going to be using normally. So we've got various stages which change the lights in the tester. So that's on standby. That means it's plugged in, but it's not charging. And then C is plugged in and charging. And that will click in in a minute. There we go. And it starts charging. We've got voltage now on our tester. And we can do a low... Uh, low resistance ZS test, earth loop impedance, and we get our earth loop impedance reading then on this. So we've got 0 0.3. So what we'll do then is we'll put that in to our iPad. Uh, we'll put 0 0.3, and that's that's all good. So we've passed the PE test, we've passed the PE error, we've passed the CP error, so that's all good. And now we've just got to do our RCD trip times. So hopefully Lee will reset the RCD inside. So we'll put it on 30 milliamps auto. We'll do a ramp test first. And that's tripped at 17 milliamps, which is perfect. So we do the ramp test. We click and we put 17. It's really nice to be able to input these details, you know. And DC monitor is internal, so we can include that. And then we do our one times trip. So we just turn it off and then turn it back on again, essentially. And we'll put it on auto test. So we've got 26.1. Take this off now. There we go. Now it's doing our five times. We've got 8.38. Here we go, last test. 15.8. That's it. So that's all of our functional and safety tests done. Everything works well, and we can record all those readings in our test certificate, which is a lot more information than a lot of your basic test systems and certification softwares have. So we go through now, and for our RCD test, we've got 26.1 is our highest for one times. So we put that in, 26.1, and then five times was 15.8. Um, now I make sure all my details are, are all filled in, which they are. Click reports, click preview, add, add signatures, and then it will create a PDF preview of the report that I'm going to send to the customer, and you'll see just how good looking these things are. They really, really look nice. So you can see here we've got a company colours, it's all branded up. And if we scroll down, you've got like a contents page and then you've got the details of the installer and the QS location of the job, all that stuff. Obviously, we've not finished filling out everything yet, but this is just to give you an idea. You've got your schedule of inspections, which you can, you know, all your tick boxes. And then this is the important part that I wanted to show you. This is your EV test results. So you've got your various details, your serial number, all of that is on a nice PDF thing. And then at the end, it's got an um, explanation for the customer as well, which is really nice. Glossary of terms, uh, loads of extra little bits of information in there which add value to the customer. And it's just good for us as a, an installer, really. So I hope that video has been of interest and benefit to you. If you're looking for certification software, CertSuite is great. We use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I have used it for probably about a year and a half, maybe two years now. You can check out my previous video where I showed off 
using it when it was called Vespula. I'll leave a link up here for that somewhere. And there is a link in the description below where you can find out more about Cert Suite. Do a free trial, give it a go and see how you get on with it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and we'll see you on the next one.